Welcome to advice from Aunt Mary. Tonight's advice is how to be the very best husband and very best father you can be. Let me tell you guys, it's simple, very simple. Number one, every day tell your wife, I love you. Make it sincere, mean it. Don't say it if you don't mean it. But if you mean it and you love your wife, let her know often, every day. Also, every day, tell your wife, you are beautiful. Sometimes you can say, I think you're beautiful, and sometimes just make a statement like the whole world believes it. If she really doesn't like you lately, don't say, I think you're beautiful, because she's like, I don't really care what you think. <laughs> you know, there's those days. But if she does care what you think, you can say, I think you're beautiful, honey. But maybe make it a blanket statement like, you are beautiful, like it's a fact, you're beautiful. Okay, make sure it counts, make sure you mean it. Okay, um, women are very easy to please. I know you think we're complicated. We are very complicated because we're thinking of a million things at a time. We're thinking of cleaning the house. We're thinking of raising the kids. We're thinking of what are we gonna have for dinner. We're thinking about who's gonna mow the lawn. How do I get the garbage emptied? Oh, I have to go to work now. Oh, I better not be late. Gotta have my makeup on. Gotta have my hair done. Oh, did I shave my legs? Oh my gosh, I may have a run in my nylons. We are thinking 10 things at once. You guys are thinking, I won't say what you guys are thinking. I almost said something bad, but anyway. Um, it was bathroom talk. We want to bathroom talk on advice from Aunt Mary. Anyway, here's some things women like, okay? Now, I told this to my friend the other day, and she had a whole different list. But this is a list that I think generally women like. Now, I'm talking to you young folks, like people that I'm an aunt to. So I'm talking to men from who are married from, you know, the youngest age, well, I'm talking to all men who are married or who are fathers. Number one, women like chocolates, unless your wife doesn't like chocolate. Women like flowers, unless your wife's allergic. But, you know, we like jewelry, clothes, shoes, probably handbags too. Okay, but I was talking to my friend and she said, that's, those aren't the things I like, Mary, but she, she's married, they don't have children, and um, they're both on their second marriage, and she said, this is what I like. I want to date my husband. I want to go to dinner and a movie. I want to go out for a ride. I want to go shopping with him. They like to go to specialty shops. They travel together. She wants those moments together. So be sure to read the book about... Um, not really the color code, but there's a book about the five love languages, and that will tell you and your spouse, read it together. I haven't read it really, but I know what it's about. Anyway, it'll tell you what kinds of things your spouse wants, okay? So maybe your wife wants a back rub every day. Maybe she wants her feet rubbed. Maybe she doesn't wanna be touched. So those things you need to know. What is her touching level? Does she like a deep back rub? Just a soft back rub, just a back rub, or just a back tickle. My grandma used to tickle my back. Oh, I loved it. And you know, you kind of wiggle when it's so tickly. It's like someone tickling the bottom of your feet. It's like, oh, that's so tickly. But um, it's fun when you're a kid to have your back tickled by your grandma. So women like those things. Some people like time together. Some people like gifts. Some people like... Um, Hugging and kissing, you know, the physical touch. And there's two more, and I can't remember what they are. But anyway, get the book. Read the book of the five love languages and find out what you like. So you can tell your wife what you like and find out what she likes. And you give each other the love language you want to receive, that they want to receive. So your wife gives you the love language you want to receive. My mom wanted her back rubbed and her feet rubbed. My dad didn't want his back rubbed or his feet rubbed, so he would not rub her back or her feet. It didn't make sense to any of us. She wanted a diamond ring. He never gave her one. She needed those two things from my dad. She never got them. He provided a living, and he came and went to his church callings and helped with the kids. 
but my mother asked for those things and never got them. If your wife is telling you something she wants, like a bigger diamond ring or her back rubbed, be listening and give it to her. A woman will tell her friends, I got the horrible husband or I've got the best husband in the world. Be the best husband in the world because she will brag to her parents, her siblings, her friends, and even the kids will hear it. Be the best husband you can be. Be the best father you can be. When you come home from work, be sure to go to work. Guys, when you're young, get your college degree first before you find a wife, before you go dipping into anything. Get your college degree. Get some knowledge in your head. Get a house. Get a wife. Then get your children, and you'll be glad you had that time with your wife first. You'll be glad you're intelligent enough to hold together a relationship after you've been able to accomplish something as difficult as college, and it is hard. Get your education, work hard, bring home enough money to pay for food, for clothes, and for shelter. Women need shelter. We need to feel secure. We need to know that when we have our babies, they have a home to come to. We need to know there's gonna be a little nursery, no matter where it is. Some people use a drawer of a dresser to put their baby in because they're extremely poor. Don't be extremely poor when you have your family. Get some money under your belt, get some education, be able to be job worthy. Don't expect someone to hire you. Go out and create a job. Then create jobs for other people so you can hire many people and help other people's lives. Don't just, oh, I didn't get a job. Nobody owes you a job. You can create a job. College is all about government jobs. College money is from government. College jobs pay back the college funds. But if you're an entrepreneur, which many of my family members are, you can create jobs for other people. Now that's when you become valuable, when you can add to society by hiring other people and letting them have jobs because most people want a job. Create the jobs for them. Work hard. When you get home at the end of your hard working day, or you can work smarter and work less hours, whatever. Hard or smart or both. When you get home at the end of your day, or if you are working at home, when you're off work, be the best dad you can be. Play with your children. Play with their toys. Make your sounds to the engines of airplanes and choo-choo trains and cars and buses and trucks and anything you're playing with on the floor. Army men, you know, all these little... I don't know all of them, Superman, I don't know all the characters, but play out the characters. Be intuition, intuitive and creative and find out what your kids want to do and do it with them. Be smart, okay? Play with your kids. It's easy. Take the ball and bat outside. Make up some games. Play red light, green light. Mother, may I kick the can? Annie, Annie, I over. Find out these games and let all the neighborhoods come, kids come to your house and you be that great dad that plays with all the kids where all the moms are going, huh, your husband is so great. I saw him playing with all the kids and he even included my little Tommy and my Tommy came home and now he can throw a baseball. Be that dad. It's not a Kool-Aid dad, but it's the coolest dad. Be that dad. My dad hooked up a horse and buggy he had a little Shetland named Beauty, and he would hook her up to a little horse and buggy, and we would go around the neighborhood. You know, I looked at that horse and buggy when I was a grown-up. <laughs> it was a two-seater for two adults. I don't know how five or six of us got in that little buggy, but Dad was there, and we must have had tiny buns back then because I know I sat there with Liz and my sister Debbie and my brother David, maybe Nancy, but dad would go around the neighborhood and anytime you'd see a kid out in the yard staring at us, going by, singing, I'd like to ride a horse and buggy as I go traveling through the town. I want to hear old Dobbin clip-clop. I want to see the wheels go round. 
Horsey, horsey on your way. We've been together for many a day. So let your tail go swish as the wheels go round. Giddy up, we're homeward bound. So we would sing this song, we'd go through the neighborhood, and kids would stop and stare, and dad would stop and say, would you like a ride? And they'd say, yes. And he'd say, go ask your mom. And they'd come back and they could have a ride, and the mom would be standing at the door with a dish towel, so happy that her kid gets to ride in the horse and buggy. And sometimes we would have to get off the horse and buggy and maybe stand there or walk home, and that was fine because dad was sharing, and he was the best Dad, you can do that. You can do that for the kids in your neighborhood. It's anything. Letting them jump on the trampoline, turning on a sprinkler, running through the sprinkler with the kids, getting a ball and tossing it around. Anything you can do with children outside where everybody can see you, where it's open day and you're playing games, you're being a good dad, you're being a good neighbor. And everyone will brag about you. Don't you want that? That's what you want. Okay. Now, my brother-in-law taught this in a budget class. He said, let your wife handle the budget. Let your wife handle the budget. If she's a stay-at-home wife and she's tending the kids, like my mom, maybe your mom and dad. You know, my dad worked. My mom stayed home. Thank goodness dad could afford to do that for mom. Thank goodness mom could afford to stay home because she raised 12 kids. Half of us have college degrees. None of us have been in prison. None of us smoke. None of us drink. None of us do drugs. Um, you know, we turned out halfway good. We are all contributors to society. And mom and dad did that. Dad worked outside the home. Mom worked inside the home. Dad worked outside in the yard. Mom had us clean her house. She did the cooking and the laundry. We did the cleaning. And everything worked like clockwork. You know, right, you know. It was tough, but we did it. And we all did it. And everybody knew their parts and everybody did their parts. That's what makes a family work. When you come home from work, dad, husband, you are not off work. And neither is your wife. Her clock doesn't end at 5 o'clock when she's a stay-at-home mom, Okay. That's the hardest job in the world is to stay home with those kids. And when you get home, don't ask her if she's been watching soap operas and eating bonbons. Of course she has. No, kidding. She hasn't. She's been playing with the kids. She's been teaching the kids. She's been reading to the kids. She's been cleaning up vomit and poop all day, okay? Don't ask her anything other than, honey, how was your day? Right? Don't assume she's doing nothing. She's working very hard. So if she's working very hard, let her handle the budget if she wants to. Teach her how to handle a budget. Go to the bank. You can both learn how to uh, manage a checkbook, how to budget your bills. Take some budgeting classes together. Women and men both need to know how to handle the money. I see older generation, older than me, people I've been caregiving for, and when the man dies, the woman doesn't even know where the money is. Doesn't even know if they have life insurance. Doesn't even know about bank accounts. Might not even know where the car keys are. Some women don't even drive. Don't take over all the positions. Share the management of things together. That's the new modern way. The men change diapers too. The women go to work too. We all do all jobs now. One of you likes to mow the lawn, the other one doesn't. So the one that likes to do it. One of you can empty the trash, one of you can do the laundry. Make up your chores, decide what you like, have the other person do the other thing. If there's something you both can't stand, you can hire someone to do it. That's where I come in. I'm a housekeeper. I go around and clean people's houses. You can hire me. Okay. So, let's see. Hmm. Oh, when women get so stressed out and the doorbell's ringing and there's a pot on the stove, she's cooking something, her phone is bing, 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 texting, 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 and one of the kids is yanking on her leg and you're like, honey, I need to know. I need to know right now. Are we going at 7 o'clock? I mean, everything's going on and she's like, ooh, like a pressure cooker. She's like a pressure cooker and she's just going to, yeah. Okay, when you see your wife get to this point, 
go over, turn down the stove, take the pot off, wrap her in your arms, and just hold her just like this until she goes like this. And then say, do you want me to keep hugging you or do you want me to let go? And she'll just be like, hold me another minute or she'll be like, let go. Okay, if she says let go like that, let go, let go. Just let go. But if she's like, oh, one more minute, one more minute, you know, hold her another minute. But when you hold your wife and she's stressed out, she will melt in your arms and then you have become her hero. Then you are taking care of your woman. She needs that strong, powerful man in you. She doesn't need a man that's gonna slap her around and beat her up. That's not strong and powerful. That's a weak man. That's a man who can't control his temper. She needs a man who will come and save her in the middle of the crisis. That's you. Put your arms gently around her and hold her in your arms. Not so tight that it's creepy and not so loose that it's fishy, but just that right amount, just that middle amount of hugging. Or, you know, whatever, you know, if she likes it light, if she likes it tight, you gotta find out. Give her the hug she wants. Okay, I think I've said everything. Date your wife. Date her once a week if you can get out. Some people can't afford to date once a week, but they can afford to go to the grocery store. If your kids are old enough, you put the oldest two in charge, and you just go to the grocery store for your date Friday night. Just go for one hour, take her out for ice cream, and come back, okay? Or better yet, hire a babysitter, take your wife on a real date. Dinner and a movie is boring sometimes. Sometimes it's just like, please, let's go to dinner and a movie. Other times it's like, oh, can't we do something else? That's when you go bowling. That's when you ride the scooters downtown Boise. I love the scooters, I love them. That's when you go jet skiing. That's when you go motorcycle riding. That's when you go for a hike. That's when you ride e-bikes. Ooh, those are fun, e-bikes. You might wanna go skating, roller skating. You might wanna go ice skating, go to an ice hockey game, go to a ball game. <coughs> Don't take a woman to a ball game, a woman who hates sports. I do not like sports, but I want to go to one ball game a year. That's it, one ball game a year. And I need to go to a ball game. It's been five or ten years since I've been to a ball game. So I gotta take myself to a ball game because I am I am a whole family. I am the dad and the mom. Okay, so you tell your wife you're you love her. You tell her she's beautiful because she is. You wouldn't have married an ugly woman because you're better than that. You picked her. You picked a better wife than that. Be sure to help at home. Change the diapers. Okay, I remember when I was married and my husband wanted a little <coughs> smoochy time. And I said, honey, I can either do that or vacuum. And right now, I'd rather vacuum. So if you want to vacuum, then I'll have some energy for some nookie nook. He vacuumed. It works. So vacuum, help your wife, rub her back. Rub, oh, oh my gosh. I had this guy, I was his caregiver. And guess what? When his wife was on her deathbed, I was in the kitchen with the kids and the daughters-in-law were telling me that this man rubbed his wife's back every night of their marriage and that their husbands rub their backs every night. Do you know I wanted to hit one of those women on the way home and bump her off and marry her husband? Almost did. But anyway, that's the husband I want. The husband that will rub my back or rub my feet. Oh, that would be so good. And I, in turn, will do that for him. Yes, I will. And I'll wash his dirty socks, too. So whatever you do for your woman, she's gonna do twice as much for you Women are just that way, we are givers. We give all day long to the kids, we give at the work, we give at church, we give wherever we go, we give, give, give. Give said the little stream, we do it, okay? We do it. So you need to do half of what your wife does and believe me, double time will come back to you. One thing my sister taught me, 
say thank you. Tell your spouse, honey, I appreciate this delicious dinner. Honey, I appreciate, then she'll say, honey, I appreciate you mowing the lawn. And when you appreciate each other and you say thank you, what happens? The other person is so excited they do more work. You want your spouse to work harder? Thank them for what they did. That's a tip from Aunt Mary. I sure love you guys. I love all my nieces and nephews. I love my kids. Jake, Josh, Kendra, Jordan. I love my daughter-in-law, my son-in-law, Stephen, Joanne, and my precious, precious, gorgeous grandchildren. John, Jayla, Michael. Here's a shout out. Shout out to Caitlin, Preston, Holden, and baby Ethan. He's not a baby anymore, but he's the baby. Aren't you, Ethan? All right, I love you guys. I love everybody. I hope you tune in again and take some of my advice and create your own advice for your own family. And thank you so much for watching Advice from Aunt Mary. Good night.